Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the UBC Learning Circle, hosted by the Center for Excellence in Indigenous Health. We're very pleased to welcome Kim Haxton from Indigenize, who's going to talk to us today about connecting to self. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Hunkamenum speaking Musqueam people. I'd also like to acknowledge the First Nations Health Authority for generously funding the circle. As always, to everyone participating today, some of the topics we cover uh, can be sensitive or emotionally triggering. Please take care of yourself. If you need to talk to a friend, an elder, counselor, parent, whoever it is for you, please do so. So I'll introduce our team quickly so we can get straight to it. My name is Cole. I'll be facilitating the session. I'm from Chewethel First Nation. Uh, off camera, we have Cynthia, our production coordinator, and Jordan, our assistant coordinator. Um, if you, for those of you on Zoom, if you feel so inclined, please introduce yourselves in the chat box. So to kick off the circle, I'd like to give you a little bit more information about our guest speaker, Kim. Uh, Kim is from Potawatomi. No, I'm Potawatomi. <laughs> Kim is Potawatomi. Potawatomi. <laughs> yeah, there we go. From the Wasoxing First Nation in Northern Ontario. To the background in wilderness therapy and Aboriginal youth leadership development with degrees in geography and outdoor rec. Um, after 20 years of studying with Indigenous healers from Nepal and Thailand, Peru, Venezuela, Mexico, Belize, Haiti, and North America, uh, she's become deeply involved in healing the community and the individual. Kim also has extensive experience in trauma counseling training and applies this knowledge to her work with survivors of trauma, both immediate and, uh, and ancestral. Kim brings a unique perspective to healing, combining both traditional and modern modalities and she's convinced of the capacity of individuals and communities to enact their own healing through decolonization and reharmonization with nature. So with that, I wanted to welcome you again, Kim. Thank you. I'm so looking forward to the knowledge you have to share. Thank and, you. Uh, take it away. Thank you. Um, I wanna welcome everybody into this virtual circle. It's kind of like that, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanna acknowledge all of your ancestors. I also wanna acknowledge being on this territory of attested and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Um, really amazing to be here and to be able to sit and have this conversation. It's really interesting. We were, you know, you think in a traditional society, we'd be all sitting around a camp, sitting around a fire. And now in our time and place, it's this virtual reality where it's just a couple of us in the room and people out there and wherever there is. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of neat how, you know, that transference of, of time and space. Um, so I kind of wanted to start with with uh, with a place of is, is that there's five things that are universal for every culture in the world. Um, it, it's interesting because we go back and forth between sort of a, a modern world and so a cultural anthropologist Angelis Arian said there's five things that are universal for healing, and yet every single culture in the world is like yes, yeah, so what. Right? But it's kind of funny that we have to refer to the academic as well, you know, it's, it's that validation. And, yeah, for the validation. And yet we know in the five healing selves or bombs are um, singing. Every culture in the world has sing, some form of singing. Every culture in the world has some form of dancing. Every culture in the world has some sort of storytelling, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, um, storytelling, uh, prayer, meditation, ceremony. And also the last one is connecting to nature. You know, you look at first peoples across Canada, across North Turtle Island, most of our names have something directly to do with the land or an element, mm. right? So Potawatomi, the translation is uh, uh, keepers of the fire, you know? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then for Musqueam, it's people of the seagrass, right? Mm -hmm. I believe. And so when you start looking at people's connection to land, and, uh, and this goes around the world, you know, of people's direct lineage and the place in which they come from literally is the place in which they come from mm -hmm. you know the geography and the and the foods and all of those things and it's, it's an it's an interesting piece but the five healing bombs are are kind of the the place which help us recenter mm -hmm. you know and a lot of people and i ask you how many of you think of yourselves as artists right mm -hmm. you know and most people would shriek and go ah i am not an artist yeah. you know and and yet we when did that start? I asked people, when did you stop expressing yourself? You know, mm -hmm. as children, we play, we don't even think about it. We sing, you know, I love watching down the street and I see children singing and dancing and, and playing. And then we stop expressing ourselves. We stop doing that. 
you know, and mm -hmm. some people stop doing ceremonies or prayers or some people stop, you know, like whatever, whether it's reading a book or storytelling or theater, like all of these things we just stop doing for whatever reason. Right. And then we, when you look at the direct correlation to people's wellness and well-being, there's an assembly that you can see where it's been broken from any of those selves, any of mm -hmm. those healing bones. Um, as an example, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is happening in our communities, uh, if one of the effects of colonization, we see the effects of it, let's say the downtown east side, mm -hmm. you know, with substance abuse or with, um, with mental health, also with physical um, uh, wellness, you know, uh, yeah. some of the things that are plaguing our communities, diabetes, heart disease, things like that, the autoimmune diseases. Um, and so we're seeing these places in which uh, there's a place of separation. Mm -hmm. Traditional cultures always had their ceremonies. And we see that here, we see, we know on the West Coast is the winter houses. Uh, there's different ceremonial practices in different cultures that people have been able to maintain yeah. despite things being banned, you know, and, and that's what brings people back together. But not everybody has access to that, you know, and um, it was in West Africa uh, that uh, I was listening to a podcast and the man was saying that in their traditional societies, when the warriors would go out to fight, when they would come back into the community, the community would surround them with blankets and sing them back into being whole, which is really an amazing practice when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder for war veterans and the amount of homelessness, the amount of addictions, it's huge because we don't, when you come back, it's a, a disposable thing. So I look mm -hmm. at that, there's, there's a place of disparity in our cultures and our communities where we've forgotten how to sing, dance, you know, all of these, all of these cells and bring them back in. So today we're going to be exploring a couple of concepts. And if you have questions, please, I don't know how that, that comes through in this world, but please come through with questions. Um, is, and I want to start with everybody is, is about relationship. And the first relationship that we have when we're born is our breath, mm -hmm. right? You come out of, everybody's like, what's, you know, first relationship is with your mama. I'm like, yeah, no. It's when you're disconnected from the cord and what happens is breath and breath. When you look at the translation of the root of breath in different places, it's uh, it translates in a Latin place of inspiration, which is spirit. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting place for our ceremonies, whether it's a sweat lodge, whether it's a cold water bath, you go into the cold water, immerse yourself in cold water, you come out and you're like, <gasps> You know, and it's like you're cleansing and you're breathing in. We've forgotten how to breathe. Trauma sits in our bodies because we don't breathe properly. Mm -hmm. When you watch a little baby breathe, its little belly is like, wah, 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 you know, because it's so directly related to spirit. Mm -hmm. But we forget to that. So we hold trauma in our body, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is breath. And I'm going to ask everybody out there, if you can just practice. I want everybody to start with me right now. We're going to take five breaths and I want you to breathe into your belly okay so I'm going to ask you, how do you feel right now? Since you're my person here, how does that feel? Immediately, I feel more relaxed. More like relaxed. Just more. I feel like I can sink down. into myself, like my body a little mm -hmm. more. Do you know what I mean? Like I just feel more rooted. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. That. And that's kind of the, the, the place. So there's an interesting thing. I'm going to get into a little bit of neurobiology. There's, uh, there's a couple things here. So our breath helps us calm and soothe, mm -hmm. right? So when we experience, when you see people in high levels of anxiety or stress, you see them, <gasps> their body naturally wants to take breaths, you mm -hmm. know, or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and there are all different types of breath work you can do, you know? And, and so there's an interesting thing that, that our body goes into this stress response, right? Mm -hmm. So it starts like this. It starts with 
this part of the brain right here is the old the brain stem is the oldest part of our brain in development and that's the fight flight freeze faint response mm -hmm. that's like you know a bird when it experiences stress flies away a dog when it experiences stress wants to fight mm -hmm. you know um a uh the little goats when they get stressed they <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i'm sure they must open their one eye and look around <laughs> um and, and 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 so it's like freeze and you know a deer that gets caught in the headlights mm -hmm. stupidly stops and yeah you know and, and 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 so but it's a natural instinct we actually do that as humans right mm -hmm. and so as humans when we experience trauma and stress we have these holding patterns so what happens is that the the, the reptilian part of the brain fires up and goes and we have these things called neurons and they actually create ruts in the road. Dr. Michael Yellowbird is an amazing resource on neuro, neuro decolon, neuro decolonization. Yeah. Neuro decolonization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and so what happens is these, these stress responses because of trauma create these, uh, pathways in our brain that eventually become like ruts in the road of whether it's fear based trauma, uh, like well, whatever the trauma is, you know, the fight, flight, freeze response. And eventually we just constantly, it just goes into that, no matter what we experience, it just, the brains fire up in that way. So, they, sorry, Kim. So when you say ruts yeah. in the road, you mean like, what, regardless of what you're trying to do, it'll just kind of fall into that yeah. rut and start going. The neurons fire. Path. Okay. You know, you experience a little bit of stress, like, oh, I'm late. Yeah. And then it, it just goes into the same rut. Right. right. So the breath helps us recapitulate. The, the neural pathways, which is really interesting, mm -hmm. right? You think of after taking breath. So the bombs also are the place that help us recapitulate, mm -hmm. right? Because it helps us make meaning of, right? We slow down, we're painting. We are, um, it doesn't matter, we're singing, we're not thinking, we're singing, mm -hmm. we're expressing, we're moving, right? right. So, so we're gonna go into this a little bit further um, because it's about, you know, this is about connecting to self. And so we're going to do an activity together. This is going to work for everybody out there and for you as well. Um, and so the brain does this, right? So at this point, I got to say this, I got, I'm going to share this story and I love this story. And I also have to bring in my friend, Dr. Mike Lickers, uh, who is Mohawk and he, for all the Mohawk people, forgive me, but this is a true Mohawk story. Mike says, <laughs> and I'm just like, it is not, <laughs> but I'm like, that's, a story or this is uh, this one isn't a high story but you know he's always yeah. this is a mohawk story and i'm like ah, yeah. mike <laughs> <laughs> and um and so story goes like this um the creator had a gift for the humans and said gathered all of the winged ones and the ones that moved on their bellies and the ones the four legged and the mm -hmm. the ones that swam everybody came to the gathering and said i've got this gift for the humans where are we going to put it Eagle said, I'll take it to the moon. They're never going to get there. Creator's like, that's a great idea. But they're going to get there. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get there. Bear said, I'll take it into the caves, into the deep, into the mountain. Nah, they're going to, like, remove the mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Ant said, I'll take it into the earth. Squid said, I'll take it to the deepest trench in the ocean. Creator's like, yeah, now these are the two leggeds that are coming are sneaky. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And... Finally, the little jumping mouse came up and whispered and said, and the creator's like, that's it. Where did they put it? So humans would spend lifetimes looking for it, looking at, looking for something. Mm. They put it in here, mm. right? In the heart, which is interesting because the elders and the wisdom cultures have always said, look to your heart, you know? And, mm. you know, when you think of look to your heart, I, I don't want to look at my heart because ah, that's like, I don't know. you know, and we live in a society that's very cognitive based, right? Mm -hmm. And not heart based. We know that our families are, or the idea of our grandmother is love, you know, and we go yeah. to that. In the 1970s, a woman scientist discovered that the heart actually has neurons and fires up like the brain. Mm -hmm. In the 1980s, it was a man scientist guy. He said, guess what? the heart has neurons and the science community went, whoa. And then like, and the woman was like, mm. and all the wisdom cultures are like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we've known this thing, catch up to us, yeah. you know, just listen. And so there's a process that happens in the, in, in that place where we're recapitulating the neurons and we're breathing and we're slowing it down. We're actually firing up the neurons of a felt sense place from our heart. Mm -hmm. So the story, you know, gives a deep meaning to like, what we feel, you know, and that's the 
place in which, you know, using the healing bombs that bring us back into the place of flow, into a place of expressing, mm -hmm. we're not here and in this place where these, these it can be tricky. Yeah. Our mind and the patterns that we're stuck in and our responses to feeling uh, uh, accosted or, oh, you said this, even though, because I can't really hear you because I'm still caught with my trauma, mm -hmm. you know, that stops me from really being able to be present and listening to you, mm -hmm. right? So the five healing bombs, like, so, so the idea is that we need to connect with ourselves before we can connect with each other. We live in a culture of make-believe, you know, what's happening right now, you know, on a, a political level and what's happening within our communities. Mm -hmm. We live in a culture of make-believe where it's not, but so ridiculous, you know, climate change, all of these things that are happening, you know, we're still living in a fossil fuel economy, which is like, no, hang on a second. Mm -hmm. But we're just not living in what's really, like when you think of that, it causes so much anxiety, you yeah, know? Totally. You know, and people, what keeps you awake at night? You know, okay, well, I don't have enough money for my retirement. Do I have all these things? And, and or my holiday or whatever it is. And all of these, like, these things, right? Which is stress. So take another breath with me. Thank you. <laughs> right? And so connecting to the heart and connecting to ourselves is one of the primary pieces. And it's not a place of being self-absorbed. You know, I was uh, doing a leadership course recently and Shane Point uh, came to speak and he said leadership isn't about isn't about you know your papers or any of that and we can see that mm -hmm. it's about what is doing what's right from here right. which again is another lesson you know what's right from here what's the right thing to do mm -hmm. it's to stand up and say no you know and and so there's all these interesting things about how do we connect to ourselves you know so that we can be with each other right that's the big place and when you look at our society which is fragmented, whether it's First Nation society, whether it's, you know, the people that we're working with, when you, if you're a teacher and you're working with children and everybody has all different places in which how they show up, yeah. you know, how can we actually be with ourselves, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So our system is set up in um, a place of, that creates separation. Our academic system is like, are you an A student? Or are you a D student? Are you worthy or are you not worthy? You know, right. and stratification. So, stratification. So it's all these places where we actually feel good. And when I asked at the beginning, is how many people here feel like an artist? Most people probably went, oh, you know, do you make food? Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's artistry to make food, make a recipe. Do you um, have a garden? Do you budget money to, to make sure you can feed your family for the month? That's artistry, mm -hmm. you, you know? And so we have the very limited scope. There's, there's arts that are mastery, you know, like a, let's say ballet or something of the symphony or something like that. Sure. And that's a different type of form, but the expression that art allows gives us a place to make meaning and to understand and to connect with something bigger than ourselves. We live in a, in a universe that has, it ha we live in a time of high paradox, high contrast, mm -hmm. and the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful all exist in once. We live in a society where there's ability for so much um, uh, creation, music, and arts, and love, and expression, and we also live on the other side of that in a place of destruction, you know, mm -hmm. of greed, and all of these things, and it's like, and they both exist as teachers, right, yeah. you know, and it's crazy that we keep, to, we keep on choosing this hyper-capitalist model that keeps us away, and keeps people sick, you know, and disconnected. Mm -hmm. So, in, in uh, what I kind of wanted to start with, with all of us, is that I want to connect with your creative self. And I just want to, we're going to do a guided meditation for a few minutes. And I'm going to hope, I hope that everybody has a piece of paper and a pen or some colors. And, uh, and we're going to, after we finish it, I'm going to ask you to connect, to draw out what you saw. Okay. I'm going to tell a story. And I'm going to ask you to follow along with what you experience. Okay. And I'm going to, don't worry about what words I say. Whatever you see is your experience. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to ask everybody to sit comfortably in your chair. You can either close your eyes, look on the ground. And we're going to start with our breath. So slowly... 
take nice deep, big breaths and feel supported on the chair that you're sitting in. Your feet are connected to the ground. You don't have to think about what has to happen tonight or what happened this morning. Just be present with your breath and your body. Where do you feel pain? Breathe into those places which might feel a little bit, you know, where there's a little bit of aches and pains. Nice deep breaths. Feel the air moving in and out of your lungs. Feel the air coming across your lips. And as you feel supported and comfortable in the chair, we're gonna, gonna go, we're gonna go on a walk together. And on our walk, we're walking across this field beautiful field. You can see mountains in the distance. We're in a valley. It's a beautiful valley. What kind of smells can you smell as we're walking across this field towards the mountain? Do you see the remnants of summer? You can hear the bees droning. Maybe a crow flies over. You can hear its wings. You can feel the heat of the sun on your, on your cheeks. A nice fall breeze is going by you. And as we walk towards the forest, you can hear the songbirds. In the distance, you can hear a tractor. Take another breath. As we start walking into the dappled forest, you can feel the sun and the shade. You can hear the leaves as they're changing from the summer to their fall selves. We're walking on a deer path, a deer trail. And that smell as summer is turning into autumn. The sounds become quiet as we're walking up the trail. As we're walking up the trail, look around into the forest. The feeling is beautiful, it's gentle, it's quiet. Maybe the sound of insects, maybe the sound of birds. And as we're walking up the trail, you see a door. What does the door look like? Use your imagination. What does the door look like? What is it made of? We're going to go to the door. I want you to look at the handle and feel the handle under your hand. And as we open up the door, we open the door into a room. You can look, look around and see the forest where there's a store and there's this room. And as you go into the room, what do you see? Is there something that's familiar in there? Look around the room. Is there anything that's new? On a table at the back of the room, there is a basket or a box. We're gonna walk over to that basket or box. Feel, touch it and feel it. What does it feel like under your hand? Are there, are there any pictures or ideas or senses that are, can become awakened as you touch it? Is there anything familiar? I'm gonna ask you to lift, take the lid off the basket, the box, and look inside. What do you see? What message? What image? What are you looking at? You can pick it up if you want. Maybe you're just seeing colors and light. I'm gonna ask you to look at it a little bit longer. What does it remind you of? and put it back in. 
and ask you to close the lid. Look at the box of the basket again. Look around the room. Is there anything else that catches your eye in the room? Something small, something big. With one last breath, we're gonna step out of the room. As we step out of the room, I want you to look back into it one last time. What do you see? We're gonna shut the door now. We're back into the forest, on the hill, in the dappled sunlight, back on the trail, walking down. Listening to the insects, listening to the songbirds, branches cracking under our, our feet. As we come down the trail, we can see where it opens and the sunlight is lighting the field or the meadow. And as we come back into the meadow, the feeling of the sun bathing our bodies, we can walk back across the field. The smells, the drone of the bees, in the last of the summer. And in this next breath, I'm gonna ask you to slowly feel the chair supporting you. I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes slowly and come back into the room where you are. Maybe stretch out a little. And I'm gonna ask you to pick up your pen and paper. And I'm gonna ask you to sketch out whatever you saw in the box, whatever was important to you. Nice one. <laughs> I'm going to give you another minute. You can probably continue this after I don't. And if you're a stick person, drawer like myself, that's great too. doesn't look like anything <laughs> but it looked like something to you it does you know yeah. what you know what you saw i do okay um so i'm just gonna ask people to we'll we'll do the process yeah, yeah, around this so when you went there, what did you see um if you'd like to share a few things. yeah of course uh i saw medicines um some traditional some sage grass and and some bundles but also um also some other kind of more contemporary forms of medicine, I suppose. Like what? Um, it seems weird. I saw like um, like a, like incense almost, like and um, and and, uh, and like stretching bands and uh, like a stethoscope. I basically just saw like a toolbox of of medicines of a bunch of different different kinds. Oddly enough, underneath that, um, I don't know, this is going too far, but no. in it, there, it was all kind of wrapped in, in a red cloth, right? Mm -hmm. There was like a red cloth that was underneath all of this medicine, and I could just see underneath the cloth, there was, um, there was a, uh, there was a carving or a painting, I don't, like, I don't know what it was, it could have been both, maybe, um, and it was of a, a raven, and it, I could just see the eye. 
looking up at me. Um, yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Cool, so I'm gonna ask each of you to reflect about what you saw in there. And this is your creative spirit, right? Because what each individual saw is your own piece, right? Everybody. And there's a place in which that is our expression of our, of our deeper selves, you know? So for you, whatever reason you saw medicines, and there's no right or wrong in this. I just really, some people see colors. Yeah. You know, some people just see, they open up and it's a box of colors, or some people see, I mean, it's really interesting in this exercise about that, but it's really about you having that place in which that's your, that's your creative bundle. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that we remember, that you remember, you know, oh yeah, this is my bundle of medicine, you know, right. or, or creativity, your creative, it's your, it's yeah. your creative self, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know that for you, those are the images. I like that you had Raven, right? You know, Raven means so many different things, right? But we know Raven as a trickster transformer, mm -hmm. you know, you know, has a lot of deep meaning. And so for you, it's like, what is that place for you of connecting to that peace, which allows you to express. So when you get stressed, right, we mm -hmm. talked about breathing, we talked about coming into that place, because that was that place in which we just used breath work, connected into something that was just solid. Yeah. You know, so when you feel stressed <laughs> in your work or whatever, but like use your breath work and just like think of that place, that room, that box that's yours. Yeah. You know, and whatever meaning, like what were the meanings for you? Um, yeah, the, the, tr the traditional medicines like the sage grass always reminds me of my, of my grandparents um, mm -hmm. and, and my mom she likes to have medicines out. Um, it's just, the smell of it, I don't, I could, I could, I could almost smell it. I could. And it's just, it's something very soothing. Um, and I think like a lot of the other instruments were kind of what I, what I wanted to do or what I want to do with my life and, and what I think. And then, um, there's a raven was almost, I could see his eye and it was almost like he was looking up at me or giving me a knowing look, almost like a, a, a teasing look, like, this is what you want, you know, that this is, um, and it's here for you. It's, it's here, mm -hmm. but you have to find it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm getting way too off track no. and I apologize <laughs> for those that are watching online, but that's what it was for me. Yeah. It's this box is here in this, in this room inside yeah. yourself yeah. when you're ready to find it. Yeah. But until that time it stays here in the box. Right. And the box is here. Yeah. Right. The box is here. Yeah. All I have to do is look inside to find it. But importantly, I have to go to that space to get it. Exactly. And that's the place that we live in our, in our culture of make-believe. Mm -hmm. We're always looking out instead of knowing that the center is coming here. You know when a little kid is having a temper tantrum and you, there's nothing you can do, but you're just yeah. like, okay, come on, breathe, you get over it, you know, yeah. and you get them recentered. And then they're just, I love children because they're like, I'm so angry at you, you know? And it's like, okay. Mm. And, they're like, and they're always like, can I have a hug? And it's like, of course you can, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So there's a place in which we le need to learn to self-soothe, mm -hmm. you know? And we're always looking at what we project onto other people, you know? Oh, mm -hmm. it's their fault. It's their, blah, blah, blah. and we, st we have this it's like external, very, external yeah. externalized instead yeah. of like, okay, what do I need? You know, yeah. it's like connecting into self-soothe. So the arts is, the idea of arts is that place in which we can uh, make meaning of the things that, you know, uh, give expression for the lessons that are happening for us. Mm -hmm. Whether it's singing, you know, for a night of drumming and singing, or a night of singing karaoke. I love this elder, she's always like, come karaoke. Uh, like, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, there's a place on utilizing these tools uh, that help switch the energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's without us even knowing that we're doing the work that it happens. Right. So in that moment, I don't know, how was it for you, everybody, um, yeah, yeah. In, in connecting to something? Yeah? Yeah. Um. <laughs> It's, it's hard to describe, I think. Yeah. 
um, for me. At first, I was I felt very apprehensive about it. To be honest with you, yeah. I'm somebody that holds a lot of a lot of um, a lot of anxieties, yeah. and uh, you know, just just being real with everybody that's that's watching and, and, and honest in the circle that we're having, mm-hmm. it's something I struggle with a lot. So yeah. when I initially went to that place, it was very much like right. I don't want to be here yeah. because I felt it in my yeah. here. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. Right. Words are escaping me right now, no, but as I went into it, yeah. as I went further into it, particularly when we went up the path, yeah. that's where I started to feel better. Right. You know, and then the right. room, it was warm, it was there, it was safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as we came back out of the path, that could have been completely, obviously, completely different for other people, but it's, as we yeah. came back down, I started, I went through almost like a period where I was like, oh, here I come back up again, and then, and then I was up. So a couple things from that one. Thank you so much because, like, thank you. And I'm yeah. sorry that you have to be the only person that we're doing this <laughs> with, okay. right? You know, um, it, it's like it's like that place. Everybody experiences anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. And or depression or all these things. <sighs> what's underneath it? What's underneath it? We know there's a safe place. Yeah. You know, I love how we are created of stories. We've got all stories. You know, when we talk about healing our ancestors' wounds. You know, mm-hmm. we're carrying stories in ourselves, you know? Yeah. And there's a couple places on that, right? Because you know, you know, like that moment of coming, the opposite of anxiety is that place of trusting, Yeah. right? And you felt it. So yeah. understand that's your tool. That's going to be your tool as you experience your anxiety when in different moments mm-hmm. of, oh, yeah. Like think, visualize in your five breaths as medicines. Okay, when you're feeling anxiety, mm-hmm. because that's part of the reptilian part of your brain that goes into that, that's fired into those patterns, right. right? So when we can know that you're feeling, starting to feel that, that rise of energy, bring it in, mm-hmm. you know? Oftentimes, because we're so habituated because of the pattern, yeah. then we're like in it, but we can always come out of it. We can always come up, and it takes discipline and practice to be able to, to, you know, hold and just to be able to observe, oh, look, there's anxiety until it doesn't Mm -hmm. become, until it loses its meaning, you know, until it loses it. And that's a really big one for us to think about, you know, in in different ways. Um, Well, I do an activity. This is another activity we do. I like this one. And uh, pretend this is a radio, right? And I'm turning it on to, let's say, a radio station. I'm going to say CBC because we all know what that is. And I turn it on CBC and we're all listening to the CBC. And then mm-hmm. let's say we take this out of here, like because the radio waves are picking up CBC. Take it out of there. Those radio waves are still going through our room right now, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We know that. And there's an activity we do with young people, and it's called AM, FM radio. Against me and for me radio. Right. Mm -hmm. So you start listing off all the things that are against me. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, people we have, I want you to think about that right now. What are the things that you think are against me? Right. We could talk about racism. We could talk about economics. We could talk about, you know, Oh, my boyfriend or my girlfriend or Mm -hmm. whatever that is, you know, you know? And, uh, and so there's a thing around that, that I'm just like, okay, what a lot of times we just tune into the against me, Mm -hmm. you know, this is the creation and destruction. When you turn it to the for me radio, what are the things that are for you? Think of that in a moment, if you think of something that's for you. Sure. Right. Do you want me to write it down? Or, or just you know, off the head, off the top of your head, something yeah. that would be for you? Um, I have uh, I have the love of my family. I think that that's a big, big, big mm-hmm. one. It's always mm-hmm. a supporting force. Mm-hmm. It's definitely for me. Yeah. Yeah. Another one that think of, I love this. Um, the earth she's for us she gives us like oxygen yeah and like i don't know if you checked out the blackberries this summer right Mm -hmm. she just gives us these like amazing it's love right like you know and we don't even think about it right so there's all these things that are for us right Mm -hmm. against me and for me and so it's like how do we unconsciously are we tuning into the against me Mm -hmm. because there's all these things that are happening right so like this uh that court case that happened last week in the States, you mm-hmm. know, which was ridiculous. And, yeah. you know, the woman standing up and saying, it's not okay, you know, and yeah. watching everybody, rah, 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 you know, I'm just like, what is 
what's wrong with people? But we're all, whether we're tuned into social media or not, it's energy that's like moving. Mm -hmm. The war in Syria, right? It's energy that's carrying on. And we don't realize that we are these like, um, we have these abilities of knowing, like indigenous cultures knowing. Larry Merlikoff, who's an Aleut elder, was talking about seal hunting uh, and cutting a hole and everybody's sitting there drinking tea and chitty chatting. And then moments before the seal pops his head up, everybody just goes silent. And then all of a sudden a seal pops up and he's like, there's no way you could know that a seal's coming. Like you're on, yeah. you know, whatever, however many feet of ice and all of a sudden a seal comes up and everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. And he would say, how do you know? Right. Yeah. And people were like, uh, well, we just know. And I think of how most of us have become disconnected from the earth or the land, right? Yeah. Disconnected from ourselves, mostly, right mm -hmm. there. That we forget to know, even though we have moments of knowing all the time, right? Yeah. So then we experience anxiety because we're not listening, right? We're tuning into the against me radio, yeah. right? And we all do that, you know, because we also think of the brain, how we get stuck in, and socialized, whether it's our family wounds, and moments like that. Mm -hmm. Last December, I had the great um, opportunity to sit with Adam Dick, who's Kwa Kwa Kyo, uh, wisdom keeper, and to the next level. And all these elders came in and like, oh, look, the elders are here. And they're like, we're not the elders. He is. Mm. He came in on a, you know, and he said, uh, the, the elders who I thought were elders were like, oh, we've been studying. I've been studying with him for 30 years. You know, wow. and I was like, whoa. And Adam spoke and he said, he said, you know, I had the experience to be raised. He didn't go to residential school. He was taken away mm -hmm. and raised by the elders. So he speaks like a very old dialect of the language. And he was raised with knowing in the mm -hmm. plant world and the culture and the potlatch systems and all the complexity that it is. Mm -hmm. And he said, I had the gift of getting direct transmissions from the elders. He said, but what you don't understand is that you have the answers in your cellular memory, mm -hmm. which is a really big one to think about, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't even think about that. There's a teaching from my culture in the Potawatomi culture. We talk about two-eyed seeing, right? It's looking, it's, it's, be, it's not a linear time thing, you know, that the construct that we have in our dominant society. It's a place of looking into the future and looking into the past of our, the wisdom of our ancestors and the past of the wisdom of the ancestors in our cellular memory. So when we're talking about the healing of the wounds of our ancestors, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I love this image. I love this image. In um, uh, our ancestors are sitting up here. They're all around us all the time. Right. And they're like, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Oh, maybe the lessons they didn't learn. Oh, no. and it kind of reminds me of the guys from the, from, uh, the Muppets, those old guys who are like, rah, 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 right? <laughs> and, and, and not to disrespect anybody's ancestors or anything, but, you know, but our ancestors are like, ah, oh, you know, things they didn't learn or, or didn't. Mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to speak to us, but we, of course, we're so like this, we don't listen. Literal earbuds. Literal earbuds, <laughs> right? Yeah, literally. And, yeah. And, and, um, and, and so there's a place on which when we, when we connect into singing, a night of singing, a night of connecting into nature, like mm -hmm. a, that momentary of something else. Everybody had different information and drops of wisdom in that room. Some of you might not have, other so I want to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. That's okay too. Yeah. But it's like, I, I urge you to explore underneath that, you know, what was that? Because sometimes we stop ourselves, right? And that's okay too, because there's times for everything. Mm -hmm. And so there's a place in which that we go into with our, with our ancestors being like, yeah, when Adam Dick said that, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Adam Dick, because these healing bombs help us tap into something rather than um, just our brain. And you have to forgive me. I know this is an academic institution, but I want to use the word that was given to me a long time as the itty bitty shitty committee mm -hmm. that, that runs the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, and it often, you know, gets on the gerbil wheel of obsession or anxiety and all these places in which keeps us from really being present with what is, mm -hmm. you know, anxiety is like a little flag to show us that, okay, we got something that we need to, you know, so I always say, I don't say to people, I mean, there's different ways in which we do it. What are the ways to understand the trust? 
how can you bring that room of trust into all the moments that you walk in? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and cause oftentimes we get stuck in the stories, right? We were talking about that, you know, how do we transition into, uh, how do we transition in traditional cultures? We, uh, had our ceremonies and our elders and our rituals, rites of passage to show us that we were coming into the next stage of evolution, our next stage of evolution. And when we didn't understand the things that happened, there was an, a wisdom keeper, an elder who could help us connect to our own hearts to understand, to mm -hmm. make sense of the lessons that are happening. Right. You know? And so the five bombs basically help us come to make meaning. Because we don't all have elders. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't all have those people in our communities or where we are in our lives or in our work to help us to make meanings of things. Because we get lost in that, oh, that this, this linear you know, it's, it's like you're trying to run to keep up and, and it keeps us out of balance, right? Mm -hmm. but, right? The deep breaths, the deep breaths of connecting with what is. A lot of times we get caught in our stories or our triggers and we make assumptions, right? Yeah. We make assumptions. We have these moments or we're in institutions and places where they say something and you feel it in your body. You feel like this. Oh, mm -hmm. we call it, you know, it's a critical response to like, and we mm -hmm. don't say anything, but we hold that energy and that memory in our body. The AM, FM radio. Oh, that institution is like this. Mm -hmm. And then we create judgments and assumptions about you or me or about institutions or about governments or about people in our community. And we create those stories as if they are fact. Interestingly enough, that goes further into ideas, become beliefs, become truths, become mm -hmm. policies. Yeah. Right? It's quite common, but when you bring it to the self, it's like, what is the deeper truth? Mm -hmm. And only through using, you know, if you're lucky enough to have your ceremonies, you know, I know lots of communities have their ceremonies yeah. that connect you. You know, when you are able to go into a sweat lodge and you're being, you know, you want to call for the door and get out of there because it's too hot and you want to puke and you want to, yeah. and then you know, you just breathe, you breathe and it takes you deep and you're held, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. The healing occurs, the, it gets melted off of you, the energy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we know that, you know, when you have an opportunity, you do youth camps in the summertime, you get to sit around a fire, a campfire, drum and sing all night. After it, you're just like, ah, oh, looking at the stars and you're like, yes, yeah. you, get, you know? And that's collectively, but then how do we do it for ourselves? Because you can't just keep on giving, giving, giving to people without, holding you know the temple yeah. you know holding this place in which so that you can give you can i mean you look at it's funny i've been thinking about generosity recently mm -hmm. you know you can it's easy we have this idea around charity and all these things but it's like that doesn't work that disables people actually mm -hmm. you know but how can we give in a way you know so that we feel replenished so it's a reciprocal energy of reciprocity right mm -hmm. and you look at a lot of west coast cultures and the potlatch system it's not about how much you have and hold and hoard. It's about how do you take care of your community? Mm -hmm. How do you honor the people around you? You know, so it's like when I think of that in a community level, how do we do that with ourselves? Yeah. You know, how do we connect with ourselves so that we can be really present so we can have that place? Mm -hmm. You know, connecting to nature, really important. As Indigenous people, we know that. We know that we need clean water. Yeah. We know that we can't just keep on taking without, you know, um, engaging in that en reciprocal en relationship. Engaging that reciprocal relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, a lot of people have lost that relationship. Yeah. You know, and so we often sit numbed down through social media, through different things, as a, a culture of make-believe of beep, 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 fast, flashy. And we're like, okay, trying to, you know, because of our, how we're indoctrinated, yeah. instead of like, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about the gifts you have from having coming from a family of love. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that. Yeah. You know, and why can't you bring that forward with you? I mean, you do. You're a super friendly person. But, <laughs> but, but, but how do we bring that forth into our work? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't. Yeah. Right? And, and so there's a piece there. Like, how do we change that? But part of it is that when we can really connect with ourselves, no matter what's happening around us, no matter what's happening around us, we can just sit and be present. 
mm-hmm. rather than like, oh no, there's a, I don't know, there's snow, in Vancouver, so, oh no, there's snow coming, ah, you know, we, how we do when it snows mm-hmm. here, or, or if there's a tsunami, or there's things, how can we just like sit in the place of work? Okay, this is happening. And because we're constantly being in places of trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the statistics in our communities. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been to more deaths, funerals, than I have to weddings and births, mm-hmm. which is heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, so how do we hold that? You know, I look at some of the communities where, you know, suicide and, and the level of what's happening, the self harm, mm-hmm. you know. Is and we're just being burdened with it, and it's not even it's against you as in any personal place. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's that energy, which is just it's really heavy. To, how do we hold and balance ourselves so that we can hold and be present with all of these things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do people have questions? No. Um, we had a we had one person that just wanted to share what they what they saw in their Please, box. Please, thank you was uh, an apple of possibility, um, oh. which is, an, I thought was an interesting thought, um, just because it is so abstract, you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, other than that, no questions. I'm sorry for moving forward without asking people to reflect. I keep on forgetting that you actually can reflect. Yeah. And so if I could just like, er, okay, we're gonna reverse right now. Um, does anybody else have anything that you'd like to share about what you saw or what you didn't see in that but in your box, I just yeah, I want to go back to that for a minute because mm-hmm. sorry, I've totally. No, no, yeah, that's okay. This is a weird medium without having people present to be. <laughs> it's tough, I think, too, because you and I have the conversation yeah. and we get carried away talking yeah. about things, and the conversation oh, naturally yeah. runs. Yeah, there's and... people out there. Hi, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yeah. mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll give people a few minutes to kind of try to see if anything pops up. I just wanted to kind of circle back oh. to what you were talking about there. So if I. Connecting to our deeper self and 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 engaging in reciprocal relationships, reciprocal positive relationships mm-hmm. with the people around us and the community at large, that gives us a greater connection to ourselves. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it, right? When somebody when you walk down the street, somebody smiles at you. Mm-hmm. You feel you smile back. It feels good. Mm-hmm. A really really simple place, right? There's a place in which we've become disconnected. Like I don't know how it is for you, but in a city, how many people do you do you walk by and smile at? Oh. I mean, I, I make a conscious effort to do it, but it's it's all the time. There's just so many people. How many people respond to you? Very few. Very few, right? Yeah. In our communities, you if you walk by somebody without them looking, you know, it's a big problem, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, and but we're seeing it happen, right? In mm-hmm. our smaller communities where you just don't look and it's like, oh, they're just being, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, we do have a, a just a general question okay. and uh, maybe you could address it. Um, May would would like to ask what can she do with uh, students with special needs in regards to these transitions yeah yeah okay so that's a really interesting one so the breath is something that everybody can do as far as I know mm-hmm. and uh, that I've worked with because I've worked with uh, three four-year-olds who experienced trauma and I've worked in places yeah lots of different places and so the breath is something mm-hmm. you know and helps them self-soothe. So I don't know if May, if that's making sense, but that place, and I always ask people, you know, uh, what did you dream about last night? Mm-hmm. You know, cause it's tapping into our imagination. Right. You know, it's tapping into other things that people can share. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like I just may, I don't know if that's answering your question or not, but that's kind of the essence of like, Using a breath, uh, I worked in Haiti after the earthquake and we had little kids and the kids were having nightmares and things like that. And by using their breath, it was making changes. And their parents were coming in like, what did you teach our kid? Because whatever you, they know, we want to know. And they keep on talking about breathing to us, you know? Yeah. And like, but if we can learn that basic premise, the other art forms, you know, you can start utilizing, right? So, so whether it's song or whether it's tapping, you know, drumming, Mm -hmm. um, depending on the disabilities, right? What people uh, can participate in. I mean, it's such a broad question without knowing specifically, May, I don't know if you have specific things around what the disabilities are um, that might help. Yeah. So just like generally going to, going to the breath, finding something that unites everybody 
And then maybe if instead of the guided meditation, perhaps just asking them to share something, whether that's a dream or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So, um, you know, for, for, for those uh, that maybe have, have uh, um, issues with attention, maybe, then that allows them to express themselves and connect yeah. without needing to, like, follow a path yeah. set and, by somebody and, else. You right? know, give me an answer and yeah. show me this or show me your art or do those things. Yeah. Like, a lot of times we don't give space, right, mm -hmm. to allow for, like, let's say that we're going to sit in, in a place where it might be uncomfortable for you because yeah. you, you, you're awkward, but you're waiting. And one of the things... I've noticed in some of the communities that we keep is allowing giving people space to speak. So maybe it's a minute of silence, mm -hmm. and but people are all just breathing together. And then a lot of times people will say something right. or participate. So what I like in using utilizing the arts is that it does allow. Like, you know, every human being wants to be heard, seen, and celebrated. Mm -hmm. That's fact. Yeah. You know, little babies. We give it to them, and then at, well, at, when they turn into teenagers, we're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and they do that too, um, to us. And and so with that, using the different art forms, it allows our. Uh, some people like writing. Some people love storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, I find a lot of young women um, who are very introverted actually are really good writers and and drawers and artists. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't necessarily want it to be seen and some people like to sing you know are performative some people like to dance you put on music generally you'll watch everybody you know starts the drum starts going yeah. you start people you see people just you know it hits our bodies it moves energy in our body so it's like what is it that that helps people or is it going for a walk in nature mm -hmm. you know so it's like finding what the recipe is for in each of the disability or ability doesn't it really doesn't matter because there's something that connects people and allows them to shine and that's a piece that i think is important is being like ah there you are you know mm -hmm. and as a person who does mentoring when you see people have that moment of oh, you know mm -hmm. you know it's being able to be like look at that yeah. that's you and that's something so then they can remember that's the piece that connects me yeah and that's really what we need to understand is that we are connected. Mm -hmm. We live in a society very much of disconnection, you know? And so it's like, what connects us with meaning? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it may actually respond. I tend to feel the students are just human beings and don't always focus on their disability. And the breathing Good. is a great tool to help them throughout life. She really liked the AMFM. Mm -hmm. um, she seems to make sense for some of the thought process transitions they're going through as they transition from high school to mm -hmm. college. They just wanted to thank right. you for that. Cool. Thanks, Nate. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one, right? You know, because I think, you know, I think that place of the idea, what is ritual? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a key element missing in our society, you know? And, and so in transitions, because ritual is about transition, is like, how can we bring that into... You know, like we have graduation ceremonies, we have marriages, we have births. We think of those right. as rituals, but right. but there's a lot of times where, um, and some families are traditional families and have their rites of passage, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Not a majority of people have that, you know. And I think about that, and so like, how can we bring that place into understanding? Uh, um, a friend of mine works with autistic children, and she has one kid who last year and she was talking about him biting and fighting her and all of these things. And, and she said, until she, finally she was just like, you know, one day she's like, no, you can do it. I know you can. And walked away and he did it. And nobody ever thought he could do it. I think it was a writing thing. Mm -hmm. And he actually could write and do all these things, yeah. but had resisted. And she said, and then they had a celebration for him. They had a celebration for him about look at this. And, and he stepped into it. Mm -hmm. That acknowledgement, right? Yeah. That acknowledgement of like, look, I did that, you know? Yeah, and there's a place in which that's a place I think that we miss out a lot with each other, you know, in that, look at your accomplishment, you know? And it, it sounds kind of corny, but when, you know, when your grandmother, your mother, or somebody like that says, look at what you did, and mm -hmm. you're like, I got a gold star, you know? Yeah. It's kind of seems insignificant, but it fills us with energy that's like, you know, look at what I did from feeling maybe not worthy into stepping into a place of, you know, um, last week I was saying, I spoke at a, at a conference in Alberta 
but we were conference and we opened up the thing with a song which i was like oh this is a high risk moment normally you know in in our model we use we go from like low risk activities into bigger risk performative activities and i walked into this room with 120 people I'm like, we're going to sing a song together mm -hmm. and um and I watched the women <gasps> like this. I'm like, oh, come off it. You birth babies. You see lots of things. This is easy. <laughs> yeah. And and we sang the song, and the energy in the room had shifted considerably. And the women in the room went, wow. I'm like, what do you feel? And they're like, wow, it feels you know sparkly and whatever the words they use. And I'm like, yeah, that's the shift of healing and being seen in a way that nobody was seen, but we were all seen, you mm -hmm. know? And it just elite moved the energy of whatever it was. I mean, it was a very, very, uh, I wouldn't use the word pedantic, that's the wrong word. It was very uh, academic conference with policy and research and that mm -hmm. sort of, so to sing just shifted the energy in a way that was like, mm -hmm. wow, that was a recentering. And people, all of a sudden you felt people engaged in something of connection, Yeah. right? Coming back to what you were saying before, with respect to the different uh, different modes of, uh, of thinking, getting people to sing or or to find whatever it is that your art is, whether it be you know writing or dancing, all these mm -hmm. things that we talk about, kind of getting them to shift into their body, kickstarting that those uh, those pathways. So rather than the cognitive side influencing the heart, which then influences the body and makes us feel anxious yes. or gets us stuck yeah. in these ruts exactly moving the body finding that art yeah using it here to then kind of reverse that process right to kind of um spread positive energy spread positive right. thought because that changes that the mind. exactly right. so just reversing the kind of the the, the stream or right. the flow of information there you know right. you know i think well what is that saying i don't know what the quote is about the pathway the furthest <clears throat> pathway i don't know i forget i don't know if it's to the heart but to the brain because the brain just clicks in is like bum, 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 the mm -hmm. longest pathway to the heart but that's the one that you know i forget what it is yeah forgive me i just totally screwed that one up but but it, I, mean, I remember it was important when i heard it, i was like oh yeah that's what it is that's a good one it, you know, you know <laughs> yeah. it's from an elder in um, uh, Estonia, the Dakota nation mm -hmm. christine joseph has shared something with that. i remember the god i remember that but i never do um mm -hmm. but but there's a place in that and of like yeah how do we find it because then we all have meaning because like it doesn't matter you know whether you're the downtown east side there's people that connect with their heart yeah. you know and there's people that you know places that they just connect here and it's like they're afraid of connecting this place of vulnerability right. you know and this place of um of of openness so you can see, i mean really nobody's judging mm -hmm. we just have our own things that have caused this shutdown you know and we look at our society and our connection to the natural world, it's really shut down, you know, mm -hmm. how we take from the earth without giving back. And she just gives us and gives us and gives us all this love. And she's starting to get sick and it's not so good. I mean, she's going to get rid of us, right? You know, she's mm -hmm. her, like that whole, I, I, um, the ideology of that she's got a fever, she's burning up, she's got to get, got to get rid of the sickness, which I think is us, mm -hmm. you know? So she's going to have this climate change thing is like part of her thing to be like, get rid of this, get rid of the sickness, you know? Yeah. And, and so, but there's a thing of like, how are we connected? You know, we can't connect to other people. We're never going to save the birds and the bees and the salmon until we can, like, we can't even connect with our neighbors, mm -hmm. right? Until we can really authentically connect with ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? And that connecting with ourselves is healing our ancestral lineages because we're carrying blocks from our ancestors, right? Mm -hmm. We're carrying blocks of whether it's um, fear, blame, shame, guilt, teachings or whatever that is paradigm yeah. uh, in that stop us from being fearful to love to laugh to play you know i'm in a i'm in a movement class which is out of my way out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and i the other night i was like oh my god like i'm four years old <laughs> i'm four years old right now and this is like i remember rolling around like this on the floor and being like and I'm always the person in the class that's laughing like a little kid because it's just so releasing. You know, I wouldn't want anybody to really know, even though I'm saying this publicly. Yeah. You, you know, but I'm just like, why, why don't we do that? Why don't we participate more in what feeds us yeah. so that we can, when I'm stepping out in the world, that we can actually step forward and be more present rather than get caught in my fear, anxiety, um, disappointment, 
defeat all of those things that cause us to, you know, not be present. One uh, piece that I would like to share that I think is really important is that as first peoples, and I say that on a global scale, is like we had places of knowing, you know, that you can't find in a book or call it, mm -hmm. right? We had a place of our wisdom cultures that came from a very complex, um, brilliant worldviews and cosmologies of connection, mm -hmm. you know? And that became disconnected, you know, with colonization, right? Yeah. You know, women held the economic powers, mm -hmm. our gender spectrum existed, yeah. we all had rules. Um, I uh, was uh, I was in uh, working with a man from the Ornacon Basin, Jose Luis, and he was putting all these plant medicines together, and seven different plant medicines to make this medicine. And I was like, Jose, like, how do you know to put? How did you people know these medicines work together? Like, you know, because mm -hmm. really, like, how do you know? How do you figure that out? And he like and that? he said because the plants make music and this is they sing a song together. And I remember thinking, eh, you know, uh, uh, ethnobotanist Wade Davis speaks about a story about the Panan, mm -hmm. you know, and the, asking the old man there, you've got 3,000 species of plants here, green plants, or maybe it's 30,000, I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you know which plants go together? And the, the old man laughed and said, because the plants sing, and if the notes harmonize, they make music. You know, if they don't harmonize, you're going to make poison. So here it was, you know, meeting this man from another part of the world, Mm -hmm. you know who said because the plants sing and I remember just thinking wow you know when I think of the tapes that run in my head I can't even listen to myself let alone listen to my plants mm -hmm. let alone listen to the natural world let alone listen to my you know my friends or my family mm -hmm. you know let alone my community let alone all of these things yeah. and so the healing work that we do to reconnect us to that essence that place for you in that like that guided meditation, doesn't matter what, they, what tools you use, but that guided meditation, once you connect it into something which was like beyond the rational brain, because it was like, people would say, well, that's your imagination. But I'm like, well, that's your creative self. Mm -hmm. You know, it's semantics of words. And it's like, that is something which connects us into something that we know is greater than our, you know, the little gerbils running around in our brain of, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. And, you know, I meet a lot of people like, well, this is rational. This is these. And it's like, yeah, but that's just one world view. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. and there are so many possibilities of energy and the, you know the the intelligence of the universe is so much i mean it's, infinity is a pretty big place right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank goodness yeah. we're on this earth and we shouldn't be going out into anywhere else and bugging you know mm -hmm. messing anywhere else since we're not getting it right here we definitely shouldn't go to mars or wherever they're planning on going <laughs> to stay here yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah no that's that's uh it's really uh it's beautiful kind of takes us puts a perspective into the and a little plug here puts a perspective into this whole series that we're going to do together mm -hmm. indigenizing ourselves on connection mm -hmm. right this is just the first step connecting yeah. to self and then you can begin to connect to others connect to community totally. connect to the world around you totally you know we live in a society that takes us out of that and yeah. now how do we i mean it's our breath it's a place of like oh this is you know, and a lot of times, like, I like the radio and now the metaphor of, like, is this mine or somebody else's? Mm -hmm. You know, this idea, some of the ideas that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, we often do that. Um, May, back at it again. Thank you very much okay. for uh, <laughs> interacting. So can indigenizing self work for other staff who want to indigenize the curriculum? Okay, so there's an interesting thing here. Um, so in, it's a really touchy subject of saying indigenizing when you're coming to institutions because square peg round hole mm -hmm. can't work. We're using the word as an indigenous person. Yes. Really important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But as an organization or institution, which base, which is based in a, a very colonial model, how do we decolonialize that model of hierarchy? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a huge question. You know, I see people doing democratic processes and all these different things and trying, but it's like, it's a really, be careful around that. You know, it's a very touchy one because I don't want to see the, I hear it used in institutions where we're indigenizing our, and it's like, whoa, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You're not actually doing that. Yeah. You know, you're using those words. So it's a, it's a made that's kind of a funny line. So I talk about undomesticating ourselves, yeah. but as indigenous person, I talk about indigenous, right? And yeah. that's the whole premise of the eyes looking inward and outward. Mm -hmm. But an institution is based on a hierarchical model and based on all of these very colonial processes and colonialism we know comes and co-ops and takes yeah and doesn't always and puts it within their own framework so it's really uh that's another subject altogether mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. um manira asks is there a website that um that kim has that we could uh access and get insightful information which will help us all in our daily lives is there something you would recommend or something that you yourself kind of update or oh yeah oh yeah um, <laughs> so uh, indigenize.com we have our organization we run a variety of trainings but um uh i think of like i mean there's so much there's so much out there thank goodness for youtube mm -hmm. there's this man right now he's what's his name something guru sandra guru really interesting sikh man if you turn up youtube you'll see this guy with the turban and a big beard and he's like an amazing wisdom dropper on how we deal with life and different things like that, really amazing. Um, indigenous, there's a lot of uh, indigenous scholars out there right now that are, are producing really beautiful work. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just tapping into it. So I don't really have a specific answer. I love knowledge and people. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly reaching out to see what's happening and who's writing what. There's um, a young man, I wish I knew his last name, Darcy, who actually became a lawyer and is now writing a PhD on challenging Canadian law with traditional Cree law um, based on natural world and plant medicines. No, wow. no, I'm just like, whoa. Uh, I'll try and find a link to see if, I don't think he's online, I just know he's. Sure. Like that kind of work of how do we change our world views and look at it from our world views. Language is such a big one. So I say to people, go directly to the language speakers mm -hmm. and ask questions. What is this word? I love my friend Alan Lindley to his grandmother Lolly said grandma said he said something and grandma Lolly said laughed at him and said you speak too many words in English this is the word that you want and she said one word in the Okanagan Thompson dialect mm. this is what that means you know and she's like you know and laughed and so it's like language is the gateway I think as indigenous people for understanding a cosmology of the world around us that is limited by the English language so that's another thing that I would add. I would premise whatever whoever's territory you go live on, ask them mm -hmm. what those words are, or and start learning those languages, you know whatever that is. Yeah. So we'll try and find a few of those resources for you, um, and uh, and we'll certainly link um, the Indigenous website um, for everybody that was interesting. Yeah, uh, May actually has a comment. I know what you're saying, and I'm laughing as that's what the institute wants to do. I'm indigenous and relate to all of what you shared as I'm a creator, and I appreciate your sharing as their reminders for mm -hmm. me of what, of what uh, she knows. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So with that, um, I think I think we're good. I want to thank you very much, Kim, for, for coming in and sharing with all of us today. Um, I just had a little, little quick thing. Kim actually led a, a session for me outside of the Learning Circle uh, last week, and um, I want to say here and now, the work you do is tremendously important and impactful. Thank you. Um, I had never experienced a, facilita uh, a session facilitated by Indigenous before, and it was just like, do you know yes. what I mean? It was, it was other level. We had the structure of the session, it was two hours, it was just kind of like, mm, mm, mm. and then we had um, Indigenous take a lead facilitation, it was just like, immediately felt connected to the work. Um, so I just wanted to, to reiterate how important that is. Thank you. Um, thank you again to our staff, Cynthia. Um, hey, Cynthia. <laughs> and, uh, and the FNHA for making these sorts of conversations possible. Um, and I also want to take a quick moment, another blurb about our programming for the month of October. As uh, Kim mentioned, Alan's going to be coming in from Indigenize next. Um, he will be facilitating a session centered around uh, taking this conversation forward and building connections with others. That'll be on October the 25th. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one, and, and, uh, and I hope to, to see you all there. Uh, finally, uh, I wanted to thank you all and recognize you um, for your participation in the session. Uh, and you, you know, whether or not you were submitting comments or you're just watching, it's all participation. It's all it's all where you are. So, thank you much. For, thank you very much for being who you are. Um, we'll see you all again soon. Take care.